Okay, so now we're at Leo the Fourth, and he didn't—he didn't last too long. The question about you know how he dies and the way he dies and all that other good stuff. Because he has a bitch for a wife. Okay, he starts here. So you could argue that he's really starting here. So all of Humi. And Epe. Now this is if. I mean, here's the thing. And then if someone to you says. So if someone tells you. And then the next clause is going to be what it is they're going to allege. Whoever that someone is. Ide. Look. That's our next keyword. Ide. So now we're in verse 21's keyword. So now we go to verse 21. It's real important to see the sequence here. If someone, see, Ide comes from Harao. And the E ending is, they call it vocative. It means that they're telling you something. So if I said, Didaskale, I'm calling you a teacher and I'm calling at you, teacher. Alright? To get your attention. It's like calling you by your name. Okay. Ide, look. This is so funny. Ode, here, ho, the, Christos, the Christ. Now watch, it's got a cadence to it, it's really kind of funny. Ide, ode, ho, Christos. And then the next, that's why I know that this word is not in Mark's text. And then here's the next occurrence of it. Ide, eke, me pestuete. Bestuete. Okay, this is Christ. Christ is actually saying this. Okay, so it's really cute. Mark omits the hey. That means or. Okay, so listen to it again. Ide o de ho Christos. Ide eke me bestuete. See, ide o de. That's what they're saying. Oh, here's the Christ. Eat, look, here, the Christ. And then, again, look, there. And then Christ stops it and he says, don't, may, prohibition, imperative prohibition, pistuete, don't believe it. Don't you believe it. In other words, they're going to say, look, here's the Christ. Look, there he is. And the Christ stops the quoting and he says, don't believe it. That comes up because here, see, this is 778. Alright, our boy dies. Our boy Leo dies in 780. So he dies at Ide. Look. And you see the wit of that? Look, he's dead said by people who are alive standing there looking at him dead but what is Leo looking at well he's dead so he's looking at the Lord absent from the body face to face with the Lord isn't that cute now here's the other problem the minute he's dead his icky wife Irene who we just you can look at her up right here. Okay, well, wait a minute. We got to go back to verse 20's note. Because verse 20 is in, a, is in the Kuria section. Okay, you can look her up. See, she's right here. She doesn't like what her husband was doing. She wants to worship the icons and all that other crap. So she's like, oh, look, he's dead. Now I can get what I want. So it's burlesquing her. And you can see how it's nicely burlesquing Leo, who just died. And this is what the very thing she's going to embark on at this point. Because when you do an icon veneration, the, the, what ends up happening 
It's supposed to be, a, a, and as anybody will tell you, the whole idea of icons, whether it's icon as a picture, or icon as a relic, or icon as a statue, the reason why they adopted those things was because it helped the people sort of get a more tactile understanding of the reality of God, the Bible, Christ, and all that. That was the intent. But that's not what happens. What happens is that the people who want to make money say, Oh, see how good and great and important this icon or this painting or this relic is. Because then they can get your money because you admire it so much that you want to come see and play and talk with it. So it's no longer God. It's the relic. And the people who make money off it have a vested interest in getting you interested in it, which means your interest in God goes down. That's the problem with all the iconisms. All right? I'm dead certain that when they started inventing these things, they did not intend it to become a substitute for God, but that's what it became. Catholic Church did not mean for all those little rituals and everything they came up with to be a substitute for God, but that's what they became. And then when the Catholic Church started to make money on those substitutes, well, what could they do? They just kept them up. And same thing was true in Byzantium, and it continues to this day. So it's a pretty important period of history to understand. And if you were living in it, this would be a really important warning. Ide ho de ho Christos. Ide eke me pesto ete. You were living there, and you were actually one of the few remaining humans on the planet who actually understood how to count the meter. And you're seeing your Leo, the fourth dead, just here. You're like, uh oh, what's coming up is going to be bad. Yep, it sure will be. It sure will be, because now enters Irene. Irene, the, 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 I don't know what to call her, just power mad, power, power mad woman. Power mad, okay? And she comes next, and that'll handle in the next increment. Okay, we stopped at Leo the Fourth death. I didn't tell you very much about him. He only ruled for five years. Starting here through here. He was like his dad, Constantine. So we now have three, this is really important. We have three generations. Leo the third, Constantine the fifth, and now Leo the fourth. There are three generations of rulers. And if you'll notice, it started, see this is our period of starting, because he's because we're gearing up to get here. We started at 723, which is, you know, very close to when Leo the Third started. And we've gone from 723 till now when we're at 780, right there. We're at 780. Okay, 723 to 780. That's our end point. 7, 23, to 780. That's 57 years. Does that ring a bell? 57 years is, it, you know, when its seventh version, version is 56. But 57, like 56, is uh, evocative of the distance between Passover and um, Pentecost. There's actually 56 days between them. If you count those the, the days, they will be 57 if you count the, the holiday. All right, instead of just measuring between the two dates. And you'll notice that's pretty much how this whole thing has been going, is because you, the text between these keywords is divisible by seven, but is it divisible by seven counting the first syllable of the keyword? Or counting the first syllable of its bookend, or measuring only the distance between the, the two keywords. All right. Like for example, here. All right. Blepo is the keyword. Ide is its synonym. And where we are now, 
this right here, E day here, is at 749. See, because that's 748. Next syllable is 749. And it's repeated twice. So which of the two do I measure for the 70? Well, first of all, notice that there's a distance of 7 between them. E de ho de ho Christos. That's seven syllables. Ho. E de eke me pistuete. E de eke me pistuete. That's nine syllables. So isn't that cute? Seven, number of perfection, nine, trinity. And it's the member of the trinity telling you, don't believe it when somebody tells you that I've come back. Look here, the Christ. Look there. And then he truncates it. Mark truncates it because Christ had more to say in the Matthew discussion. Matthew just, it's like inserting a couple of dots. It's just don't believe it. Because Mark's gospel is always written in a hurry. Because there are troops surrounding Jerusalem when he writes. So he's going to spare words whenever he can. All right. But you'll notice he didn't bother to spare that. He could just say, Ide, Hode. We all remember Matthew. But no, 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 no. It's seven syllables. And there's another reason why he includes it. And when you find out what that reason is, you're going to die. Because it has to do with marking Irene. Irene is presenting herself as a false Christ. She does that after her husband only ruled for five years. Uh, he was co-emperor with his dad long before, but... He was alone ruling for five years. Humin Aipe. Tis Humin Aipe. Because you could say that he died here or here. So he's a someone to you. Says. Okay, well the someone to you saying at this point until here is Leo the Fourth. Leo the Fourth, like his dad, like his granddad, wanted to go back to the Bible, third generation. Wanted to go back to the Bible. Didn't want iconoclasts. He was a little nicer to the icon worshiping people than his dad or granddad. He was a little more reasoning. But he felt the same way they did. Okay, but unfortunately for him, his dad, Constantine V, married him off to a bitch. Who, as soon as she's crowned, calls herself Irene. Irene, do you? See, here we go. Here's the bitch. Irene. And there's a link you can read at RomanEmperors.org. I love that site. Because they, they have really good, pithy summaries of the emperors. They manage to they give you the right kind of information in short formats. It's really good. Okay. So, here we are at verse 21, and she's about to come into power because our boy Leo the Fourth dies. Now, for the five years that he had ruled, he, considered, he continued the policies of his dad and his granddad. So, the people who were going back to the Bible now had had 57 years of positive volition back to the Bible. It's a really, really important thing to say. Because we're going through the exact same period of history right now in the United States. They started 57 years prior to his death. 57 years prior to when I'm talking to you right now in 2017. The pro-life movement started. There has never in history been a pro-life movement. Ever. Because everybody who's sane and reads the Bible knows that there's no human life until birth. God has to breathe the soul into the body when it exits. That's Genesis 2-7. But the pro-lifers don't care about what God says. They want, to, they want political power. So starting in 1960, Jerry Falwell Sr., Pat Robertson, and all the other jerks who are so prominent today, they started saying, oh, well, the Bible, the Bible doesn't matter. We need, we need, we need them. We need to be the silent majority. We need to be the moral majority. We need control of Congress and make this a Christian nation. And that whole pattern of thought now calls itself Seven Mountains. You can Google it. 
you can go on YouTube and type that name in and hear them talk their shtick about taking over the government in order to make this a Christian nation so Christ will come back. They think they can make Christ come back. They're just as bad and they're actually the Christian version of the jihadis in Islam because the jihadis are doing their little jihads because they think that's going to make the Mahdi come back. And guess who they think their Mahdi is? Jesus Christ. That's in the Quran. Iran is, is, is sponsoring those people because Iran belongs to a sect of Islam that thinks you can cause Allah to bring the Mahdi back. Doesn't matter that the Quran says Allah has no partners. They're going to help God. Yeah, well, that's what our poor Leo the fourth wife thinks she's going to do. So Leo dies at 780. And she immediately capitalizes on his death by saying, this guy who was the head of iconoclasm, okay, which means no relics, no icons, no worshiping, none of that crap. She makes up this lie. Irene, peace. You know, Islam is peace. She makes up this lie that, oh, well, see, Leo got a fever and died because he wanted to wear the crown in Saint in Hagia Sophia, which is a church. Hello, he's the emperor. He has a right to wear a crown. That should have been the first answer of the people to her. So what? He wanted to wear his own crown? Excuse me? God wouldn't punish him for wanting to wear his own crown. God gave him the crown. That should have been the answer of the people. Second answer would have been, why would God kill him for wanting to wear a crown? The crown is not important. The crown at best represents um, recognition of the grace of God that you have the crown in the first place. So, yeah, he can wear it. In fact, he should wear it. It honors God. But they didn't answer her that way. Or if they did, they kept their mouth shut. Because what she next does is add a bunch of pearls to the crown and make this big pretentious show of taking it back to Hagia Sophia as if it had been stolen. And, of course, making a big stink of that so all the people hear about it. And that was a way of announcing, Hi, Icon Veneration is back. Hi, we're going to worship icons now, and the first one we're going to worship is the one I'm carrying, so now I'm more important because I'm carrying an icon. See how far away from God that is? It's really embarrassing, huh? So, she's the one now saying, as a result of his death, I de ho de ho Christos, I de eke. And what the people are supposed to be doing is Me pistuete Me pistuete Probably a better way to say it Pistuete Pistuete Me pistuete Don't believe it I de ho de ho Christos I de eke Me pistuete See? See how rhythmic that is? be real easy to remember if you were alive during that time and you knew about this meter thing you would be completely forewarned forearmed for everything about what this woman was trying to do okay now this is 780 not 787 she's real slow and nice about it at first so called well, you know, I caught my husband saying that he wanted to touch that crown and all wear it. And then the next thing, you know, this, this fever just happened, so it must be that it's due to the crown. And so maybe it wasn't so right for us to turn away from worshiping icons. Maybe God wants that, you see. And then over the next seven years, so we got E day. Oh, de ho oh, Christos, right here, seven years, at 
Oh, Christos, maybe our Christ should be worshipped better with the relics instead of the real word he used and thought and wrote. Replacing Christ with an icon made of wood. What did Isaiah 44 say about that? I think it was Isaiah 44. Oh boy, the guy who's going to cook his dinner uses part of the wood to cook his dinner and part of the wood to fashion an idol and then after he's cooked his dinner and he's fashioned his idol and 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 he has to you know secure it with chains so it won't topple he bows before the idol he made that's what Irene is doing here oh Christos there here's a statue we're claiming is that of Christ and you voodoo 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 Bow before the idol, bow before the idol, bow before the idol. Not good. And then, of course, they're carrying it to the next town, so Ide, Eke! Look, there's the Christ! You know, this little block of wood that you're putting his name on. Not good. Okay? Not good. So this is where that 787 right here at Christos, you can count the syllables yourself e de ho de ho Christos well e de ho de ho Christos there you go seven syllables so that's 787 and she restores icon worship because she spent that seven years saying well maybe we need the icons back because that's why Leo died and by the time seven years had elapsed since she's empress now and rich and probably pretty they all go oh yeah that must be true let's bring back the icons so that's why this is so witty you see why this is so satirically witty Hey, there's the Christ. Yeah, he's in parade. He's going down 5th Avenue. Let's all go there. Oh, the Christ is now on 7th Avenue. Let's go there. E de eke. Enough to make you scream, huh? So this is the next four years. E de eke. And then, me pestuete. E de eke. Me pestuete. E de eke me pestuete. Nine. Nine years. So for the next nine years, anybody who could have read this meter, and they could all read the Greek now, did they preserve the knowledge that this thing is supposed to be parsed in syllable counts by clause? Then they would know and they would see an exact satire like you're seeing now. They could have been saved from her. Especially in the East, where Greek was still the language. Okay? Pretty shocking, huh? Now we haven't come to her end. This is 794 at the end. But we'll handle that in the next increment. Alright. Now we're still continuing with Irene the Evil One. And as we saw in the last increment, she really starts here when her husband Leo the four dies right there in the context of burlesquing her and satirizing her and warning the believers in Byzantium if they had bothered to learn to meet her which it's very likely somebody did because this was native text to them is the burlesque here e de ho o de e de o de Ho Christos, i de eke, me pistuete, or me pistuete, probably the latter one, me pistuete. Now the one saying, i de o de ho Christos is her, and she starts saying it right here. Now, the reason why it's kind of ironic He's dead. Leo the fourth died. Right here. Okay, so she's going backwards in time to say, well, see, he died because he wanted that crown. He wanted to wear it, and God zapped him for that. But she didn't just come out and say it that way. It's like, well, you know, um, what happened was, is I, I mean, I, I maybe there's a connection. Um, he got the fever after he told me he wanted that crown to wear it. 
We women can be real bitches, okay? As every man knows. <laughs> and when we want to get our way, we will use our wiles to do it. And we'll be soft, and we'll be nice, and we'll seem to be deferential, and we'll stick the knife in. One reason I, you know, marrying was not something I felt I ought to do. <laughs> okay, so, Yide, look, my husband died after wanting to touch the crown of Hagia Sophia, wanting to wear it. And so I feel really bad about that. So see, I'm going to add some pearls to it and make a big stink of a procession to the Hagia Sophia to bring the crown back so that I too won't be tempted. Therefore, insinuating that icon worship was valid, but him saying against icon worship and then wanting to touch an icon, which was the crown, was wrong. Ignoring entirely the fact that hi, he's the emperor. He's the one guy who's got the right to wear that crown. And the people bought it? Well, no. Half the people didn't buy it. As we're going to find out. Because there's a sizable rebellion that starts to brew against the, these wiles. But, but it, it doesn't brew right away because she's so soft about it, see. Oh, there, here's the Christ. Oh, well, maybe we should bring the icons back, you know? Because maybe that was a judgment against my husband. So now all those who want to do the icon worship start to support her. And something like, but not necessarily, a civil war brews between the ones who don't and the ones who do. Because remember, Constantine was the guy who fostered that, you know, council in 754 saying, you know, we ought to ban it. And he had a lot of support for it. But it wasn't everybody. And then he got nasty. Okay, so now our girl, uh, Irene, is going to have to sort of like recast all that past time. So it takes her time. But by the time she gets to a 787, he Oh, Christos! Yeah, now it's an icon that you're parading around the streets. And of course, I'm wearing my best robes, and I'm I'm looking real pious and everything. So I I'm a Christ, yeah. And she was because the word Christ means anointed, anointed to be the king. And if you want to see how vile this is and how important it is that you know about this old past history, now go into YouTube. You're in YouTube if you're watching this. Go into YouTube. Type in Ted Cruz anointed. Type in Donald Trump anointed. And look at all the videos of everybody drooling and what they don't know or forgot or are lying about is the very word Christos. That's where we get the English word to christen. The very word Christos means anointed and if you know anything about christening the priest takes some little dot of oil, puts it on his thumb, and then puts it on the kid's head. They also call it baptism. Those are two different concepts, but this is the connection between them. To christen means to anoint. Anoint means to put some oil on your thumb and then put that anoint that anointed thumb, usually by a priest, onto the front head in the center of the forehead of the person being anointed for some kind of really important office like a priesthood or a king. Christ means anointed. So when you see all those videos on YouTube saying Ted Cruz anointed or Donald Trump anointed, they're calling those people Christ. You get that? It's a very dangerous time we're living in. I haven't seen Christians do this. 57 years after Jerry Falwell and his jerks. Okay? 57 years after. Alright? So, here we are, the same situation. And that's 787, see? So by 787, she manages to get enough agreement 
amongst the officials and the people running the empire who are getting it, you know, feedback from the people. Oh yeah, we want icons again. So she restores icons, monks, and hermits. So now everybody's venerating them in the name of Christ. The name of Kri. That's the anoint part. Stos. That's the Ted part. Kri. Stos. Anoint. Ted. Alright. She wins them over by ear. So now they're saying, "E de o de o Christos," as she or an icon or a statue or some monk or somebody who's anointed goes through the streets, all in the name of God, but not really him. So now that continues for the next four years. E de eke, look, he's there. And Christ is busy saying, Me bestute. And if you were reading this in the Greek and you knew about the syllable counts, you'd know what year it was, and you'd know, oh boy. Of course, if you could actually read the Greek and know the meter, you wouldn't be interested in those stupid icons anyway. This is so much more beautiful. But I digress. I gotta stop here because the coughing is starting again.